My name is Michael Nunley, and I am the CEO of Omen Comics and the creator of the Omenverse. I'm also the creator and writer on Dragon Girl Albino Warrior. You can find uh, Omen Comics at uh, Comics Omen on Twitter and at uh, Omen Comics on Facebook. And you're watching Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Welcome to Rapid Fire. The concept is simple. It is 11 questions, 9 to 15 minutes long. And we are in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a creative and talented person from the entertainment industry. So who is our first guest today? Our first guest today is a writer and creator of a fun comic that I just happened upon most recently. But we are joined today by the ever-talented Michael Nunley. You are the creator of Dragon Girl Albino Warrior, but how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. How are you doing? Who are you and what are you bringing to Two Geeks Talking? My name is Michael Nunley. I'm your basic geek nerd type of guy. I'm a CEO and writer for Omen Comics and Revelation Comics and a podcaster for Omen Revelations Podcast. So how did Omen Comics uh, get started? Omen Comics got started. I got hired to create a universe of characters for uh, somebody else. Kind of fell apart and I walked away with my characters and decided I was going to do something with it. Kind of a make a lemonade thing out of it. But I, I put together the comics I had, in, the, the characters I had into a, into a single universe. And I got a team together that, that could work with my budget and liked what I was doing. But that all started back in like 2018. What is Dragon Girl Albino? warrior that you're you're having a kickstarter for ah dragon girl albino warrior number one is an east meets west martial arts fantasy comic with superheroes and kaiju elements if you're wondering what kind of kaiju elements i can't say much about it but i will point to the enormous bleeding and electrified heart that is behind pylong and shifu on the cover the comic follows two stories the first is about the 24 year old chinese warrior monk named pylong uh, that is on the cover too, who was raised in seclusion at the Bailong Temple, learning the way of the White Dragon Lord, pr pr propriety, uh, integrity, justice, and honor, and mastering White Dragon Kung Fu. Uh, but now, because of a prophecy, he must come to America. The second storyline is about a 16-year-old geek girl named Danny Finney, with an extremely rare and terminal case of muscular dystrophy that confines her to a wheelchair. Danny's loving and supportive parents, Mary and James, are desperate to find a cure that can save her. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it's always great to, to have a wonderful team around you. Who are the people that are working with you on this, this amazing project? Uh, that would be uh, Steve Sellers. Uh, he's a writer with me. Uh, he writes uh, White Druid Michael Nero, Guardians of Alayim, and he's working on Dark Oracles and stuff. Uh, our artist is Tosin Awasika. Uh, he lives in uh, Nigeria. Our letterer is uh, Guido Martinez, lives down in Argentina. And our editor is Russ Pirozek. So how did you find these individuals? Uh, mostly online, um, through social media and stuff. In the case of Tosin, I actually, I used to own a comic, ma an online comic magazine called the Chico Comics page. I uh, actually interviewed him and when it came time for me to make my own comics, I hit him up. I was like, hey, this is my budget. This is what I want to do. Are you interested? He jumped on and honestly, I can't imagine working with anybody else. When it comes to naming characters i always find nameology interesting how did you come up with the names of your character the name danny finney actually came because uh when i first created uh dragon girl it was actually dragon boy mm. <laughs> and so that's where the name danny came from and i, I spell it d-a-n-n-i because it's a girl name that's where danny came from i mostly liked it because i thought it, it had a very irish sounding name to it pylong for what i have looked up essentially means dragon punch a, it's a little more toned down than One Punch Man. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. He has this special move that he does where, you know, his fist gets all electrified and he, he, he hits somebody and it's like super powerful and everything. It's his dragon punch. What is your creative kryptonite? Ah, I do my best work when it's done by inspiration. You know, I'm, I'm learning, however, that I don't do my best when I'm forcing it out under the pressure of a deadline. It's not that I can't. I'm left feeling like I, I could have done it better. To avoid this, I, I do my best to stay ahead of schedule. And I think about the story a lot, even, even when I'm watching or reading something else, looking for more tricks of the trade I can apply to the story I'm working on. 
everyone right? usually well, asks, what is the most wisest piece of advice or the most bullshit piece of advice that you've ever mm-hmm. received? But I think that's too cliche these days. Uh, what is the second wisest piece of advice that you've received that has stuck with you in your career? That's a good question. And actually, the second piece of advice, advice has really helped me out a lot. Uh, the advice was go on as many shows and doing as many interviews as possible on a regular basis to reach as many people as possible. That's a big part of building a fan base. Um, I have found this advice to be true as things have picked up a little each year. The more people I make connections with and the more shows I go on. And while we're on that note, thanks again for having me on the show. How do you think the birth of creativity was formed? I imagine... It was imagination. First time somebody tried to picture something in their head. I imagine their 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 thoughts, one thought led to another, and uh, eventually something was formed in their mind. That's got to be the birth. What was an early experience where you learned that language had power? I was once given a thought experiment to do by a friend. Put mm-hmm. simply, the experiment was to see if I could think of a word and only consider its definition and not some other connotation that goes along with it when I thought about it. I couldn't do it. And it taught me that words are not just words because they are more than just their definition. My communication had previously been based solely on the letter of the law definition of the word and realizing that there was more to that. And I know it seems might seem obvious to some people, but uh, realizing that there was more to that, even in my own mind, made me put more effort towards choosing my words more carefully. What was the first thing that you created that made you think, yes, I could do this professional? I guess I would have to say that was omen number one. It was actually the second uh, comic that that Omen Comics released. But looking back on it now, I I mean, I I see how much I had to learn uh, about making comics. And and I know I have even more to learn even now. But Omen number one got a lot of really positive feedback from those who had read it, Um, even even some pros who were nice enough to check it out for me. And um, it gave me the confidence to really go for it and, and dive into the deep end. In your opinion, what is the most important quality of a writer in comics today, and how does that translate to your comic? <laughs> right off the bat, my first thought is that writing comics is not the same as writing anything else you've ever written. There's all sorts of punctuations you have to put in the in the pages, like you want to put a little bit of a cliffhanger at the end of each page, and and each story has to be each comic has to be a little mini story on its own while building on a larger story, and and all of that. You know, it's plus when you're talking about comics you're talking about still images telling the pictures with words kind of guiding the path and and telling along the way it's just it's not the same as prose it's not the same as film um it's just a completely different monster than than anything else uh that you're going to try to write everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today who was that for you i guess that would have to be stan lee he was a big part of my childhood with all of his appearances on the Marvel animation shows, you know, with the with the Incredible Hulk and Spider-Man and his amazing friends and all that, you know. It just it just wasn't Saturday morning and still till Stan Lee called us viewers the true believers, you know. <laughs> Besides I must have watched a dozen docs about him uh, creating so many of Marvel's characters, a whole universe, in fact, from the Silver Age on. I, I guess for about 15 years now, I've, I've wanted to create a universe full of characters like Stan Lee did. And, and that's why I created the Omen Omenverse and, and the, to put them all in. Uh, granted, I have not created as many as Stan, but I am working on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you still have some time left, I think, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> and a, a few more, you know, 40 plus decades or so uh, in the future, you'll, you'll, get, you'll get to Stanley's like stable. <laughs> nice. <laughs> From a professional standpoint, you have created the Omen verse as well as Omen comics and, of course, Dragon Girl Albino Warrior. So, f- professionally, in that regard, you are successful. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Well, well, keeping things going has been a bit of a struggle for me professionally, and I, I've had I've run into several dead ends that I've had to work around. I do consider myself personally successful. I am doing what I love to do, so the work isn't a burden, and I'm truly content despite the difficulties I faced. I have never been happier, and and that contentment is what I would call personal success. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? Well, I know that failure is an essential part of life and our ability to learn and grow. So while it does hurt, 
for a bit. I, I do my best to thoroughly analyze that failure and find places where I can improve uh, so as not to make the same mistakes again. Uh, I, I pick myself back up and keep climbing the mountain. You know, I, I have regrets, sure, but I, I try not to dwell on them. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own way. And the fact that you have the younger generation with you, maybe they're inspired by you being a comic writer and, and a creative person in general. But how can they inspire the generation that follows them? You know, finding a new and unique way of telling stories is always inspirational. But honestly, I was personally able to inspire a 12 year old kid named Hunter into becoming a comic book writer and even finding a friend to do his artwork for him at, at school just by actually getting in to comics and, and getting a comic out there and, and being willing to talk to him and give him some advice. You know, I was given some help by pros when I was starting out and, and I love to be able to do that for others too. If the next generation wants to inspire the one that follows them, based on my experience, I say that they should do what they do in a way that is unique to them and always, always pay it forward. If your life was a comic book, what would its title be and what would its soundtrack be? Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Uh, I, I was not prepared for that one. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I really can't come up with a title for my life, man. That would be difficult. But the soundtrack would definitely uh, be metal. <laughs> I listen to all kinds of metal. Basically, if it has distorted guitar in it, I'm probably listening to it. <laughs> when you were listening to metal, when you first started, who was your most underappreciated band that you didn't like at the beginning, but grew on you later on in your life? Hmm. Uh, I would say Slayer. When I first heard them, I, I grew up in a Christian household. And so uh, Slayer was very naughty for me <laughs> to, to get into that. And so um, and when, when I first heard it, it just seemed so aggressive and so, I don't know, evil in some, in some cases. And, but later on in life, all of that was gone. <laughs> they grew on me a lot. I own most of their albums now. I listen to them pretty frequently. And while some of their lyrics are still a little um, extreme, I really love uh, the voice and the, and the music. It just... Uh, I don't know. I dig it. I'm a huge Slayer fan now. Well, Michael, I do hate to say, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, yeah thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Before I let you go, where can we find you? Uh, how can we support you? Where's the Kickstarter? And when does the Kickstarter end? The Kickstarter, find it under Dragon Girl Albino Warrior. It's starting, of course, next month on August 15th, and it'll end uh, 30 days after that. So I guess uh, September 15th, 16th, somewhere, somewhere around in there, yeah. You can find our comics at uh, wickedpublishing.net under Omen Comics and Revelation Comics. You can find Omen Comics and Revelation Comics um, on globalcomics.com. Uh, you can find uh, Omen Comics at Comics uh, Omen on Twitter and at uh, Omen Comics on Facebook. You can find me at Michael uh, Nunley, but uh, leave off the Y and tag on a five at the end there on Twitter and at Michael I Nunley on Facebook. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word to not the number two. And of course, on our YouTube channel, which definitely needs more subscribers because we're trying to hit our 1,000 subscriber goal by the end of this year at www.youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening, watching on Two Geeks Talking.